Welcome to our video on methods of fabricating bow trusses. This is a classic bow truss with a curved top cord and straight bottom cord. In this case with web members arranged in a variation of the modified Warren web pattern. This is a series of boat trusses elevated up to create clear stories to admit daylight. The corrugated decking is perfectly suited to this application, being very stiff and spanning between the boat trusses and very flexible in the other direction, thereby easily accommodating forming itself to the curve of the bow truss. This is a close-up of those bow trusses. The overhangs over the clear story glazing are supported by extending out the top cord of the bow truss. In the case of this truss, this top cord is more than strong enough in bending to support the fairly short overhang. Typically, the top cords of bow trusses will be rolled into the appropriate curve before the truss is welded together. The most common way of producing curved structural elements for these kinds of applications is by warp, a warping process involving three rollers. So the structural element is sent between rollers, which are rotating this way, that way, and that way. And if those rollers are spaced properly apart, then that curved element will come out with the correct radius of curvature. The key point is that this rolling process produces elements curved into an arc of a circle. To my knowledge, there are no systems of rollers of this sort that can produce other shapes, although theoretically that might be possible. For some applications, the three rollers will be mounted in a vertical plane so that the curved elements will be curved into a vertical plane. For large elements, this arrangement can become very unwieldy. Typically, it only works for small sections which are rolled into tight circles. For building structural elements, that is, elements of a fairly large scale, the more common arrangement is to put the rollers into a horizontal plane so that the element being rolled is also curved into a horizontal plane. The simplest way to support the element being rolled is to let it rest on the floor and drag it across the floor during the rolling process. In order for that to work, the rolling equipment must be mounted in a depression in the floor, as shown in this image, which is showing new equipment being unwrapped in the well in the floor. Notice the horizontal roller right here that supports and aligns the element vertically as it enters the equipment. On the other side is another roller, not visible in this particular image, which supports the structural element as it ex ex exits the equipment. These two roller elements support the member being rolled uh, at the appropriate elevation or height as it enters and exits the equipment. This shows a set of rollers that do the forming there is a mechanism for adjusting the spacing of the rollers to accommodate different sized elements and different amounts of curvature. The shafts and bearings for the rollers are almost the full diameter of the rollers. So here you see a roller and the shaft is basically almost as large as this housing. And it has to be very, very large and of very high strength material to resist the huge forces required to deform the heavy structural elements being rolled into a curved form. 
These are wide flange sections that have been rolled the easy way. Uh, they are shown here in the orientation that they would have during the rolling process. This is a curved wide flange section turned, turned up in the orientation it would have as part of a bow truss. There is always a short straight section at each end of the curved element. That short straight section does not actually get curved. This is an inherent part of this particular process. The straight material is waste material. For large sections, this waste is a fairly major concern, but not so much for small sections, because the smaller the section, the shorter this length of straight material will be. This is a bow truss with T-sections for the top and bottom cords. The T-section is deep enough that the T-section stem provides ample welding connection for the double angle well webs which are welded to each side of the stem of the T-section. This is a closer detail showing the support at the column or the configuration of the truss at the column. So here you'll notice the T-stem has angles welded on each side of it for the web members. Similarly for the bottom cord, which is also a T-section. And then to get additional strength in the connection between the top and bottom cord, there's also this web stiffener that's provided. Under the influence of wind suction upward on the roof, the bottom cord members go into compression to prevent buckling of the bottom cords under this wind suction, cross bracing is provided. So this series of elements is there to make sure that these members do not buckle to the side under the influence of wind suction. This truss has double angles for both the top and bottom cord members. The spacing between the double eye angles is occupied by gusset plates to which both the double angle cords and the double angle webs are welded. You may recall during our discussion of parallel cord trusses, we're currently talking about bow trusses, but to go back for a moment to parallel cord trusses, the spacing between the double angle top cords in between the double angle bottom cords is provided by the single angle web members. Because the web members tend to be much longer in bow trusses than in parallel cord trusses, we do not normally use single angle webs in bow trusses. They're too vulnerable to buckling and when you get the long web members characteristic of bow trusses, you need something that's more resistive to buckling, so we use double angles. Making both the cords and the web members double angles necessitates the introduction of the gusset plate, which serves as both the spacer element and the connector element. In this bow truss, the vertical web members, shown here, there and there are steel bars, thin rectangular bars. They, in addition to being the vertical web members and serving that function as part of the overall behavior of the truss, these vertical steel bars provide spacing between the double angle top cords and spacing for the double angle bottom cords. The diagonal webs are double angles welded on the outside of the double angle top and bottom cord members. Under all loading conditions, including gravity, wind, wind suction, and asymmetric snow load, 
there is generally very little compression ever occurring in the vertical webs. However, it can occur, and it's extremely important that we exercise care to make sure that whatever compression does occur in those thin bars does not cause buckling in the thin bars. In other words, the thin bars may not be that thick, that thin. They may be fairly thick. This is not generally a problem because bar stock is one of our most inexpensive forms of steel material, and the fabricational simplicity of this design makes it a very attractive option. T-sections and angles tend to be very unstable during the process of rolling them into a curved shape. To address this issue, grooves are provided in the wheels. So for example, right here is a deep groove into which the stem of a T-section or one of the legs of an angle can be inserted. This groove constr constrains the element being ro curved against rotating during the rolling process. So this shows bundled together a whole series of rings that are formed out of angles. In this case, the, the leg that's within the plane of the circle or the ring is on the inside here the leg is on the outside. Uh, it's much easier to roll it with the leg on the outside because that thin leg is where the yielding will occur and there's going to be much less tendency for anything to deform or buckle if that yielding is occurring in a tension leg. In this case there will be compression yielding on this interior leg and that's where the groove in this wheel becomes, in this roller, becomes absolutely crucial in stabilizing that section against rotation during the curving process. Typically for bow trusses, the stem of the T-section or the leg of the angle will be on the inside of the curve, as in this case, rather than like this. So there is that tendency to buckle during the rolling process, and this rolling process is very effective. Uh, this groove is very effective in resisting that tendency for those elements to buckle and instead forcing them to yield so that the shape or the shape of the structural member will be appropriately curved. This uh, shows a bow truss made from wide flange sections. In this case, the wide flange top cord has been rolled into a curve the hard way. This shows the joint detail at the support and a close up of joint details closer to mid span. The webs of beams rolled the hard way have a strong tendency to buckle during the rolling process, particularly for deep sections, such as this curved section, uh, which is partly obscured by this straighter section lying on top of it. This is a very deep section. It's fairly thin, so it has a profound tendency to buckle in the rolling process. To help avoid web buckling, an additional set of rollers is provided to help pull up on the top flange to stretch the web in the direction opposite to the direction in which it is tending to buckle. When these pictures were taken at Chicago Metals, no beams were being rolled the hard way, so there was no fully configured rolling system to be observed or photographed. However, the owner of Chicago Metals has positioned a single roller 
beneath the top flange right here of the curved beam to show where it would be located during the rolling process. For a beam of this depth and strength, this roller would be much more robust than the one shown. But you get the idea. So in this rolling process, there'd be a roller here, a roller there, another roller here, and then this roller would be between the two that are tending to crush the beam, and this would be compensating for that tendency of the web member to buckle. Here you see some bow trusses made out of square steel tube. Square and rectangular tube is not easily rolled since the thin flat walls of the tube tend to buckle rather than yield and buckling is not going to produce the desired effect in terms of curving the member. This task can be accomplished by rolling very thick wall material or by a process called stretch forming where the focus is on producing lots of tension in the member and very little compression so that the yielding process is all in the tensile material and therefore there is not thin wall buckling. Stretch forming tends to be much more expensive than curving elements by rolling between, between rollers. Square tube is very efficient since the shape is very good for resisting buckling under axial forces. It also creates very clean welded joints that can be welded all around to avoid water penetration and corrosion. These are rollers for forming round tube and round pipe. This shows some curved sections of round tube. Round tube and pipe rolls really well because the shape of the section tends to inhibit wall buckling. So even fairly thin walled uh, round tube will roll fine. If you had tubing of this wall thickness and it was square or rectangular of about this size, the wall buckling would be fairly pronounced. Curved round tube can be used to make structures of exceptional beauty, such as this bridge, which is supported by this curved tubular beam down below. This beam was produced uh, through this, was curved by this rolling process that we've been talking about. These uh, tubular curved beams are easily rolled in round tube, which is the appropriate cross-sectional shape for the combined bending and torsion that tends to occur in these curved beams. These tubular elements were curved into this shape by rolling. These bow trusses are made from round steel tubing. The curved elements were rolled into this curved shape. The horizontal elements are putting point forces on the curved elements, which is inducing axial tension in the curved elements, which is also creating bending stress in the curved elements. The optimal structural form would be a series of straight segments rather than the continuous curve. However, by sizing the tubular members properly, these bending stresses can be comfortably resisted. Using the continuous curve on an element of this fairly short length is cheaper than welding together a series of straight segments. It is also more pleasing visually than a series of straight elements. This is the International Terminal of the San Francisco Airport, designed by Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, by the folks in the San Francisco office of SOM. This is a closer-up view. This shows a detail 
of how the tubes are connected at the support point. This gives an almost complete view of the overall structure. We consist of four major columns in these locations. This lenticular shape of truss is cantilevered out to that point. This one is cantilevered out to this point. And then we have this simple span structure spanning between that point and that point. Close-up examination reveals that this structure is not a continuous smooth curve. So you'll notice this top cord is a series of straight segments that have been welded together. This was done for the following reasons. The curved cord members in this structure are longer than the standard manufactured length of tubing. Even if these lengths of tubing were manufactured, these long lengths would be challenging to handle in the rolling operations that are involved in curving the elements. The point loads on these trusses makes a series of straight segments a more efficient form than a continuous smooth curve because the straight segments avoid the bending stresses that are induced by axial forces on a curved element. Using straight segments also eliminates the residual stresses that are an inevitable result of the curving process. And I shouldn't actually say inevitable because some of the high-end um, metal fabrication shops that do these curving processes now have a technique for doing um, induction heating of the curved tubular elements so that they are in in a sense stress relieved by the heating process which occurs simultaneously with the rolling process so it is now technically possible if you go to the right locations to get curved steel elements that have minimal residual stress. And the Chicago Metals, which I showed you in the previous images, actually has that capability now. Glue lamb curved members make beautiful bow trusses. This concludes our video on fabricating bow trusses.